There's a story of the scholarly monk who was very proud of his scholarship. He went to see the Buddha one day, and the Buddha didn't refer to him by his name. He kept calling him empty text, empty text. The point being that knowing the Dhamma, knowing the words is one thing, actually knowing through the practice is something else. So he felt ashamed and tried to find someone to teach him meditation. And the various monks knew that he was very proud and nobody would take him on as a student. He finally got to this one novice who was reputed to be an arahant, asked to be a student. The uh, novice tested him first to see if he was really giving up his pride. He had him walk down into the lake until his robes were entirely wet and then come back out. Do that two or three times, I think. And the novice was convinced, okay, now he's humbled his pride. And so I taught him the lesson. The lesson was, there's a termite's nest and it has six holes. And there's, there's a lizard inside that nest. How do you catch the lizard? And the answer is, you stop up five of the holes and then you pay careful attention at the, the one remaining one that's open. If the lizard's going to come out, it's going to have to come out that hole. Of course, the meaning of the lesson was the six holes stand for your six senses, and you try to exert restraint over the five, and then watch very carefully at the mind what's going to come in, what's going to go out. And this relates to the, the duty of mindfulness. The Buddha compares mindfulness to a gatekeeper. He's at a fortress on the frontier, so there's the possibility that the enemies will try to sneak into the fortress. So he has to be very careful to remember who's an enemy who's not. He has to recognize the people as they come in and block the people who he knows are enemies. So this is the function of mindfulness. You remember what you need to do. You remember your duties. And the Buddha said it's mindfulness that is your refuge. When he talks about taking the Dhamma as your refuge, making yourself as your refuge, he defines it as practicing mindfulness, establishing mindfulness, and then keeping it established. Whatever lessons you've learned from the Dharma that would be useful for what you're doing right now, you try to keep them in mind, trying to recognize as you go through the day what's skillful and what's not. And that's your protection. That's your refuge. Because if you learn these things, but then forget them when they're really needed, what good does that knowledge do? So keep watch over your senses. In particular, keep watch over your mind. Where is your mind going? Because when the eye sees something, the ear hears something, and a defilement arises, it's not the fault of the eye, and it's not the fault of the ear. It's the fault of the mind. It's the mind that's going out looking for things to get greedy about, looking for things to get angry about, looking for things to get deluded about. That's what you've got to watch. That's the lizard. And your mindfulness is your protection. Make sure that the lizard doesn't go out and cause any trouble. You can catch the lizard, and there you are. So as you go through the day, whether you're here at the monastery or go someplace else, remember that mindfulness is your protection. That's what enables you to remember the good lessons you've learned, and to remember which ones are applicable to what's going on right now. And then you bring them to bear. Because mindfulness isn't just the ability to keep something in mind. When it's established, it's established together with alertness and with ardency. Alertness is watching what you're doing. Ardency is really wanting to do it well. When you have mindfulness established like this, okay, then it is a protection. Then it, you can take it as a refuge, and you become your own refuge. Because the mind becomes dharma.